Alright, time to fill some long overdue content. This is the March pickup video. Where, as you can see, some of the big deal was getting merchandise for the Mario movie well before the movie actually released, because that's how marketing rolls. Didn't get all the figures, at least not yet, but the one thing I definitely was going to pick up for sure, pick up really, was the Princess Peach. Just by virtue of it being a little poseful, can swivel at the waist, can't really... There's... There's some articulation in the elbow, but you really... I mean shoulder, but can't really get it in and out. Do have... No bicep swivel, but you can bend at the elbow, and you can swing at the wrists. Limited head movement, thanks to the hair, but... I was definitely gonna pick it up. Why? Because it's better than the last Princess Peach Toadstool figure I had in this scale. This thing, which had absolutely none at all. It's basically just a brick. Came with the same line as the old Popco Mario and Luigi ones where you could just move the arms and the head. So yeah, this is automatically better by default. But let's move on to the big chungus, Bowser, which... While I at least had something for Princess Toadstool on my shelf, I had absolutely nothing for Bowser, just some of the Koopalings. So I'm glad I weighed it, because... Unfortunately, I don't have batteries to show off his fire breathing. But just look at this absolute unit, this big old chungus. I can't believe I went this long without having some representation of THE video game villain. But is his posability better than Peach's? Well... Because of the fire breathing gimmick, there's really no head articulation. <sighs> Got a lot more movement in the shoulders, bends at the elbows, swivels at the wrist, and he can actually, he has legs, he can move. He's got legs, knows how to use them, but it's kind of hard to get him into a pose where he's just flat. So it's supposed to be a seven inch scale thing, but usually, because of the leg, you usually get him just, just over six inches what have you. But still, even without the fire-breathing effect available right now, this is great. This is for the movie, but it just looks so good and so detailed. Well, well, not overly so. I mean, you got some scale texture here, but you don't exactly have washes or anything, but you're not going to expect that sort of stuff, like from McFarlane and stuff, and something from a franchise that's mostly meant for kids, so yeah. And continuing with the Nintendo theme, I got even more Pokemons! Here's... Here's a... whatchamacallit... Combuskin, that's somewhat poseable. Swivel the... At the knees... Shoulders... And the head. Pretty much in scale with some of the other Pokemon stuff I have, including that big ol' Select Typhlosion. And... I, I liked it. If I had gone through Gen 3, I would have definitely started with Torchic, because it's a cute little bugger, and then evolves into this... this fighting Kung Pao chicken that can torch you. Let's see Link dare try to whack those chickens. And we got ourselves a little Piplup, and if I had gone all the way to, to, to Gen 4, I probably would have started with this little bugger, because he's a little penguin. My dad likes penguins, and he's cute little bugger, and he evolves into a water steel type thing that can, like, cleave an ice flow with his flipper. I mean, you gotta love that. So, yeah, cute little pick up. And as for everything else, well, after learning that uh, Disney Corp is gonna take their shot at an alien movie, who knows how that's gonna go? Well, like it or not, they're doing it. The filming started in March. Who knows how it's gonna go? I remain cautiously optimistic. I even liked Alien Resurrection, and I picked this up because this seems to be the closest thing to a canon continuation of that story. We never got an Alien 5, never really got off the ground. I don't know, something wrong with Joss Whedon's script, and her. Fox lost confidence in Neil Blomkamp directing. I, I don't know what it was, but we never got a follow-up. Oh well, at least we got this book. A little light reading. And this is definitely alien canon. 
I keep hearing that this is the absolute best Alien game there is. Better than the Super NES Alien 3, which is kind of Metroidvania-y. Better than the Aliens Arcade game. Better than the Alien Resurrection game, which was developed by the people behind Star Fox. Who knows? I'm definitely going to have to check it out. And... Yeah, it's an Astromo edition that has some of the extra stuff. Yeah, and why didn't I get the Switch version or something? Because I'm an idiot who's got to have his physical copies. Especially for something that's supposed to be the best Alien game ever. And all the hubbub over the Resident Evil 4 remake made me realize I really haven't bothered with it since a friend of mine showed me the original for the PlayStation back in the late 90s. So I figured, hey, you know, I need, you need to get in this series. But what do I bother with? It's like... Oh, I need more GameCube stuff, so here it is, Resident Evil Zero. And it even came with a free memory card, for what that's worth, and it's got the instructions, both discs seem to be in okay condition. Yeah, this should be a good time too, at least. Well, that was my March Madness for 2023, hope you enjoyed, stick around for April's coming up soon.